Venus. Blazing bright in our skies, yet hiding a dark, volatile world beneath its clouds. A place that may once have been like Earth, before transforming into a suffocating realm of heat and pressure. NASA has chased Venus's secrets for decades, from the Mariner flybys of the 1960s to Magellan's radar maps of its tortured surface. But now, we're going back, not to orbit, but to plunge through its atmosphere all the way to the surface. This is the Da Vinci mission. In the moments ahead, you'll witness that descent brought vividly to life and meet the minds behind the mission. Dr. Jim Garvin, Da Vinci's principal investigator, leads the charge. Payload systems engineer Matt Garrison ensures the tech survives the fall. And program scientist Dr. Lindsay Hayes is helping frame the questions that could reshape what we know about rocky planets. Launching in 2029, the Da Vinci mission, named after Leonardo da Vinci, is designed to address fundamental questions about the origin, evolution, and composition of Venus. During two gravity assist flybys, da Vinci will study the cloud tops in ultraviolet light. Tracking cloud patterns as they change with time and analyzing signatures of mysterious chemicals that absorb ultraviolet light. Both flybys will also examine heat emanating from the Venus surface on the planet's night side. We will look for geological clues of this planet's mysterious past to paint a global picture of surface composition and the evolution of the planet's ancient highlands. Seven months after our second flyby, Da Vinci will release its atmospheric descent probe. The spacecraft will watch its probe enter Venus's atmosphere over the course of two days. The probe will take about an hour to fall through the atmosphere, taking measurements and snapping images down to the surface. These measurements include profiles of composition, winds, temperature, pressure, and acceleration. Key gases will be measured to help us understand how Venus formed and evolved. Some of these measurements may reveal chemical signatures of ancient water. With our suite of measurements, da Vinci will provide new insights into Venus's atmospheres, complex composition, structure, and chemistry. As the probe nears the surface, its descent camera will capture breathtaking bird's eye views of the mysterious terrain known as the Alpha Regio Tessera, possibly revealing evidence in the rocks that water once flowed across the Venusian surface. These up-close images of the surface will provide new insights into geologic processes and will help us to understand what it might be like to stand on the Venus surface. The Oxygen Sensing Student Collaboration Experiment will shed light on the role of this gas in the Venus atmosphere. The discoveries that emerge from this diverse data set will tell us whether Venus was truly habitable and the story we reveal at Venus will reach even beyond the solar system to analog exoplanets that will be observed with the James Webb Space Telescope. Venus is waiting for us all, and da Vinci is ready to take us there and ignite a new Venus Renaissance. We've seen the mission. Now, let's meet the minds behind it. To understand how da Vinci will uncover Venus's secrets, we sat down with the people leading the charge, those who've spent years shaping this bold exploration. Dr. Jim Garvin, the mission's principal investigator, Matt Garrison, payload systems engineer, and Dr. Lindsay Hayes, Da Vinci program scientist. We asked them the big questions. Here's what they had to say. Why Venus? So by getting to know Venus, the planet that grew a big atmosphere, relative to the Mars, the planet has a paltry, tiny one, we can sort of look at the, at the bookends and see where we fit in and where we might be going. Venus may be a tale of an Earth-like planet that, became, that lost its habitability, which is a fragile idea of how life can gain a foothold. So we want to understand that at Venus and look at Mars and the ancient records of possible life, or not, um, on that world. So these three planets are the best things we have 
to get to know how our planet fits into this beautiful solar system and even beyond. So that's why Venus matters. What are NASA's plans to explore Venus? NASA now has plans to send two missions to Venus and an instrument on another one to open our eyes to this world in this 21st century space age. New instruments, new capabilities. One of those missions will take the plunge into the atmosphere, bringing the chemistry lab to the samples to make measurements of the caliber we've been making on the surface of Mars, but for the Venus atmosphere. Others will globally map this beautiful planet so we can compare Venus to Earth and use Venus as a clue to how we understand potential Venus-like exoplanets. What are NASA's plans to explore Venus in the coming years? So in 2021, NASA selected two Venus missions, Da Vinci and Veritas. Um, and these two missions are gonna, uh, they're gonna tell us some different things about Venus. So Da Vinci um, is gonna be the first time that we've sent a probe through the atmosphere this century. Um, as that probe goes in, it's going to make little measurements, little sips of the atmosphere, make pre pressure and temperature measurements as it goes down. And it's gonna tell us a lot about the origin and evolution of that atmosphere, as well as maybe whether or not uh, Venus had oceans in in the past. Veritas is an orbital mission, and so it's going to orbit around Venus, um, and it's going to be making lots of measurements of the surface and interior and help us sort of understand how the, the solid planet evolved and what, what's happening on the surface now, how it may be active today. Can you tell us more about the first mission launching in June 2029? What are you most excited about with this mission? So our first mission back to Venus, the first one back to Venus's big atmosphere, literally an ocean of air, is named for Leonardo da Vinci, called da Vinci. And this mission, while flying by Venus, will also set up to, to allow a space vehicle that looks like a giant spherical submarine to descend through the atmosphere and make measurements all the way from the top of the clouds to the surface, collecting the secrets of whether Venus had oceans, the history of the atmosphere, its kinetics, dynamics, whether there were volcanoes active recently, and then imaging all the way to the surface over a giant mountain range system, not unlike those here on Earth, almost as big as the mountain ranges you find in places like Australia. Why must we take the plunge to measure how Venus's atmosphere and climate operate? So our sister planet Venus has the largest atmosphere that is, the ocean of air that's around it, of, of, of any of those around the rocky planets. That's Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Venus, and our moon. So this big ocean of air is the biggest. It's a thousand times bigger than that of our Earth. And in it is a story that awaits to be told. And so going to that atmosphere ourselves, bringing the instruments of the 21st century that have worked at Mars and at the Saturn's moon Titan and that worked in the Earth's atmosphere to study the Venus atmosphere, up close and in person and personally will be epic. And then looking under the massive cloud deck at the shape of the mountains and what they're made of as we descend closer to the surface, as we would say in a helicopter on Earth, we can do all that with this first mission and open our eyes to the Venus that we have not really yet gotten to know very well. Getting to any planet is difficult, but Venus is especially hard given its extreme temperatures and pressure. How do you build something that can survive in a place like this? Yeah, Venus has a few really big challenges. Um, the surface temperature is like 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about even with a uh, professional uh, wood fire pizza oven. And the pressure is crushing at 90 times what we have on Earth. Um, so we need to protect our delicate science instruments from that. They're not going to be able to survive that environment. Um, so instead, we're taking essentially the science package from the Curiosity rover and sealing it up inside a 500 pound titanium sphere, it's about three foot diameter, and that'll protect it from the temperature and the pressure. Um, and then we go send that sphere skydiving through Venus. Um, so we'll take all of our measurements on the way down. It'll take us about an hour to fall from the top of the atmosphere down to the surface. Um, we have to take those measurements as they're happening and transmit them up to a relay, and then we will smack the surface at 30 miles an hour. Can you tell us about your role with the Da Vinci mission? Sure. Um, I'm one of the engineers in charge of figuring out how to go take these measurements at the right time to get the scientists what they need and to guarantee that we get the data sent up before we um, have our up close and personal encounter with the surface. Um, so that means a lot of working with the scientists and the engineers and optimizing 
um, what our descent looks like to get the best return for this really one-shot event to make this work. Venus is often called Earth's twin, given its similar size and rocky landscapes, but it is a very different world than our own. Can you tell us more about this mysterious world? Yeah, I like to think of Venus as sort of our evil twin, right? So Venus is similar in size to our planet. Um, they're, they're just about the same size. Uh, they're right next to each other in the solar system. Venus is just one step in from where we are. But when it comes to the environment on the surface, Venus is very, very different. So Venus has a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere um, at the surface of the planet of Venus. It's 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Think uh, the inside of a wood-fired pizza oven. It is uh, 90 times the Earth's pressure at our surface. So think like the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and those clouds, those clouds are full of sulfuric acid. So it's acidic and it's hot and it's high pressure and it's very much like our evil twin. What about the Da Vinci mission are you most excited about? You know, the really exciting thing about the Da Vinci mission is that as it goes through the atmosphere, it's going to be making measurements all the way down. And so it's going to tell us, um, you know, with, with sort of unprecedented uh, resolution and information, what each different level is like in terms of temperature and pressure and composition and things like that. It's going to tell us a lot more about not, the atm not only the atmosphere as a whole, but each level of the atmosphere as it goes down. And then once it gets below the cloud deck, it's going to be taking pictures um, with the, one of the highest resolution cameras we've sent to Venus yet, um, and really getting you know real pictures of this high of these um, these highlands, these tessera, which are some of the oldest surface areas on the planet. So it's really going to help us unlock a lot of information about the atmosphere. What do we still want to know about Venus? You know, Venus is sort of shrouded in mystery, right? Like because Venus is very similar to Earth, but in some ways very different than Earth, um, we, there's more to understand. You know, our earliest missions to Venus uh, really changed our perception of what the planet was like. And so that got us to a place where we were able to learn a little bit about Venus. And now that we've been able to take all of that data, analyze that data, use, you know, combine that data with some of our ground-based assets, we have some fantastic, you know, sort of radio images of Venus and things like that, um, we're able to sort of use that and, and science is an iterative process and so we've learned more from our previous missions and that allows us to you know sort of make more targeted questions with our next missions like da Vinci and Veritas sort of understand more you know we, we have some ideas about this so we can now have a hypothesis about what formed the atmosphere and now we can sort of test those hypotheses how does the da Vinci mission connect with the remarkable discoveries about exoplanets that are being made today by the James Webb Space Telescope Getting to know Venus as the kind of exoplanet we may be able to detect and study in depth with NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope is a wonderful opportunity to have planetary ground truth on a world that has a big hot atmosphere close to a sun relative to those, those exoplanets we'll be discovering with James Webb that we're already looking at with that telescope. So by learning about Venus up close and her workings from the cloud tops down to the surface, we can understand what James Webb may discover as that great vehicle of exploration explores exoplanets that may be Venus-like, and perhaps more Venus-like than Earth-like, because Venus's will be easier to see with Webb. Recent studies indicate that Venus may still have active volcanoes. What does this tell you about Venus? Well, we've seen with the missions of the 90s, like the Magellan Radar Mapper, that Venus has a lot of volcanoes, and that's how planets get rid of their heat. Earth does that a lot underwater through the mid-ocean ridges. Venus does that apparently almost everywhere. So we want to see whether any of those volcanoes are active because, in all honesty, they should be. That's the way planets work. So we want to test that idea using not only what we can see as Venus changes, but what the chemistry of what those volcanic eruptions could be like. If we can read those signatures through the kind of chemical measurements we can make by bringing the chemistry lab to Venus um, to see whether she's active today or was recently active. That will change everything. Having another volcanically active planet just next door, just imagine that. A huge thank you to Dr. Jim Garvin, Matt Garrison, and Dr. Lindsay Hayes for sharing their time, their passion, and their vision for Da Vinci. Missions like this don't just happen, they're built on decades of curiosity, collaboration, 
and the drive to understand something bigger than ourselves. And that's why we're here. At Wormhole to Cosmos, we'll be following Da Vinci every step of the way, from pre-launch to its daring dive into Venus's skies. We'll bring you updates, discoveries, and the deeper questions this mission dares to ask. If you've enjoyed this journey, consider subscribing, giving us a like, and joining a growing community of explorers just like you. Remember, the universe is vast, mysterious, and full of wonders waiting to be explored. Stay curious, keep looking up, and until next time, keep your eyes on the stars.